Hey, hey, John Hope Bryant. I'm live uh, for my weekly scheduled broadcast. I do this intermittently, inter intermittently during the week when I am uh, between meetings and uh, when I'm sort of winding down in the evenings. But once a week, I try to schedule this. I've also have a how you, how you come up series. I want you to check that out. It's three to five, six minute uh, bursts, uh, breaking it down, how you come up. I see you guys all signing on uh, to the session on black economic empowerment for the evening. Uh, I'm going to be focused on what to do and what not to do. Uh, because this may get cut up in uh, a podcast. Uh, I'm not going to do shout outs uh, uh, so I can uh, keep this uh, very crisp, but I see you all signing on I, and I will be recognizing you all in my comments. I'll be commenting after I finish this broadcast, hey, you guys signing on uh, post. So just know I see you and know that I'll be uh, responding personally to each and every one of you. Uh, so let's deal with uh, this issue straight on, black economic empowerment, what to do, what not to do. I'm going to deal with some basics first, uh, and then I'm going to get into some sophisticated stuff. Um, let me deal with a basic sad one that is also instructive. This weekend, um, so I'm really concerned about our young generation, let me just say that, of all races, but I'm really concerned about African Americans. When black folks have, when white folks have a headache, black folks have pneumonia, even though we're all sick. Uh, it's like we're born on probation in America, we've got to be twice as intelligent, twice as smart, twice as well-dressed, get up twice as early, stay up twice as late, work twice as hard, be twice as honest, uh, just to be invited to the aspirational party. Other folks um, will get um, fired if they're incompetent, but we have to be competent to be hired. These are just rules of the road. This is just the way things are. If you're African-American, you've got to be super competent to be hired. If you're mainstream, you've got to be super incompetent to be fired, typically speaking. So um, just understand the rules are not level. The playing field's not level if you're a person of color. But you can't get angry about it. You can't be a victim. You've got to be a victor. So I'm not saying discrimination and racism don't exist. I'm saying you've got to work around it in order to get what you need, which is your aspirational success. So this weekend, um, a friend of mine, without naming names, his son, I'm sorry, his uh, cousin, uh, was gunned down coming out of, uh, 21 years old, gunned down, African American coming out of a grocery store, coming out of a, 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 a convenience store. A young man was in the wrong place, wrong time. He had done nothing wrong. Um, but, the, but the guy who gunned him down um, was a thug. And he was the, he, and, and he, the young man got in the middle of a bad situation. Um, and it was black on black. This was not, this was not, this, this, was, this was not racial profiling, whatever. This was black on black. And uh, and, and it just hurt my heart on so many levels. But when making matters worse, this young man, 21 years old, did not have burial insurance, uh, did not have proper life insurance. Uh, he's just had a, a, a newborn child. So my message to you, uh, and a friend of mine said, look, you know, uh, these, you know, the kids, you know, stra drained me when I was, when they were alive, or they can't bankrupt me when they die. Um, and I, and it sounds cruel, but, but this is real talk now. Uh, you don't know whether your children are going to outrun, live you or not. And if you're a young person, you can't uh, just absolutely be assured you're going to live to be old and gray. You don't want to be a burden on those you leave behind, certainly if you have children, certainly if you have a wife or a husband. What I want everybody to do watching this broadcast, I want you to go out. I'm not endorsing any one company on this, right? I'm just telling you. I want you to go out and find an insurance company. Don't say you can't do it. Don't say it's too expensive. It's not true. Get your, if you're a young person, 20 years old, 25 years old, a $25,000 insurance policy payable to anybody you identify will cost you $20 a month. You hear me? A $25,000 insurance policy on your life that'll be that'll just paid out, no questions asked, upon your death will cost you $20 a month. So whether you're a young person, you can afford to do it, or whether you're a parent for your children, I want you to do it, right? And, um, and that, God forbid, something happens to them, right? Their burial costs will be covered, right? And there'll be a little bit left over. Let's say it costs ten thousand dollars to bury somebody um, or cremate them. Then you'll have fifteen thousand dollars left to try to set the child up, put a little trust fund in place for the child, set the family up, pay some prepay some bills. But you don't. There's so many situations I hear where where a death physically, the traumatic already the tra trauma that leads to a death economically because no one planned. 
So everybody should get a proper insurance policy. Uh, everybody. Uh, I've got five of them, okay? Uh, and you're never too old, right? But if you're a young person, right, it is easy to get an insurance policy and it costs you next to nothing. There, at 20 bucks a month, there's no excuse, right? You spend that, you spend, spend that on a bad latte at Starbucks, okay? Uh, uh, you spend that at a bad lunch meal, right? $20 a month is your insurance policy, no pun intended, that, you want, that you're gonna be taken care of in death and not a burden to, your, uh, to, to those that you love and that you actually may even set them. I mean, if you can pay for 40, 50 bucks a month or 100 bucks a month, you can actually, I mean, you wanna, you wanna break generational poverty, right? Figure out a way to get a million dollar, half million dollar insurance policy. Young person, get an insurance policy at a young age, may not cost you more than $100 a month, get a half million dollar insurance policy, quarter million dollar insurance policy, you will break generational poverty in your family because you're gonna set that family up, God forbid, that you walk out of there and whether you don't know how long you're gonna live, but you dang sure know you're gonna die. So even if you don't die early, you're gonna die at some point. And if you paid that insurance policy, you paid those premiums, when you leave up from this earth, you check out, even if you just made minimum wage, even if you just made 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 a living wage, uh, if you had a, you, you never saved a dollar in your in your, in your life, a proper insurance policy with a hundred dollar a month premium will net six figures to your family, allowing them to put kids to college, pay off debt, buy a home, set yourself up for the future. Um, and there's a difference, by the way, between uh, getting paid and building wealth. I want black folks to understand. I want you to stop just talking about getting paid uh, and start build, talking about building wealth. Young lady, 16 years old, broke my heart, African-American, middle class. I'm not talking about some poor girl, family, went to a private school. I heard this weekend that she was doing online, is it online porn? And had $26,000, 16 years old, in her mattress. $26,000, 16 years old. She was twerking or whatever online and had set up a situation in her bedroom after her parents had gone to bed and she was doing this in her bedroom, uh, uh, thought it was okay, thought it was cool. It's not cool, right? <laughs> okay, that's not how I want you coming up. That is, that is, you know, cut the script. Parents, you need to start spending more time with your children, and young people, I need you to start making better decisions about how you're gonna roll. You can't not just make money any way you want. It's not cool. You can make money as a drug dealer, or a, a mafia person, or on a stripper pole, but that doesn't mean you should, right? And I don't even know how to make money. I know how to build wealth. And the way you build wealth is in your sleep. Okay, did you hear that? Stop talking about making money and getting paid. Start talking about building wealth, right? And there's many ways to build wealth. And I'm, I'm going to switch to, to how you come up in this challenging world we're living in, right? Some basic things I want everybody to do, right? So uh, you, make, you build wealth in your sleep. Okay, when you get educated, okay, reading a book, listening to audio tapes once a week, going to community college, Going, getting an AA degree, a BA degree, an advanced degree, a master's degree, a doctorate degree, right? When you get education, you will earn more. You hear me, what I'm saying now? I didn't say get paid, right? As I said, a drug dealer didn't get paid. Doesn't mean that that's a, something you should be trying to do. There are no retired drug dealers, okay? okay? When you get advanced education, you will earn more. And if you get a four-year degree, you'll earn a million dollars more in your lifetime than somebody with a high school diploma, right? Don't even talk about people who don't have a high school, high school diploma. They're really in a bad spot unless they become an entrepreneur. I want you to get as much education as you can jam down your throat. Listen to me. I want you to get as much education as you can jam down your throat and everybody who you, who you love. When, I go, when I'm in the airport, uh, I can tell the educational level of everybody around me by how they talk. This is real talk now. I can tell whether you whether you made it to high school, whether you graduated from high school, whether you have a, a two-year degree, a four-year degree, a doctor degree, an advanced degree, based on how you communicate. All right, your word vocabulary, your expansion, your the elegance, your tone of how you're speaking, the the, the thought, the, the high frequency or lack thereof. So if I notice it, everybody else is noticing it too. I want you to be undeniable undeniable as an aspirant in this society. I want you to get as much education as you can jam down your throat. Education is a renewable asset and it grows, it does not restrict. So once you get education, you will never, no one can repossess it from you. You make wealth in your sleep. Education is a form of wealth. An insurance policy grows when you're sleeping. It's a form of wealth. Stocks and bonds are a form, they grow in your sleep. It's a form of wealth. 
Small business ownership it grows when you're sleeping. If you have a reputation, brand, other employees working for you, it grows in your sleep. Entrepreneurship, you're building something out of nothing, it grows while you're asleep. Uh, home ownership, which I'm gonna talk about here in a minute, it grows, uh, it's, you're building appreciation, it grows while you're sleeping. You build wealth when you're sleeping. Now, write this down. In the, the number one way to build wealth is home ownership. If you're a poor, struggling, working middle class person in America, don't listen to people who tell you you don't want to own a home. I don't know what they're talking about. People saying you shouldn't own a home, probably own a home. Okay, the folks on TV saying you shouldn't own a home, you need, to, you need to check them and ask them this question. When they say minorities should not own a home, it's not a good investment, you ask them, by the way, do you own a home? The answer is, of course they do, because uh, it makes all kind of tax reasons and appreciation reasons. That's right, real estate. When America came, when the first folks came to America from Britain, uh, the, the governors weren't given platitudes and plaques and, and, and awards. They were awarded land. Okay, the governors, the royalty, royal class that came to America were awarded, in fact, everybody was given land. The, even down to poor whites who got here were given 50 acres per person, dead or alive, who made it to America, which was more than the 40 acres of the mule the black folks, folks got. In fact, we never got that for 40 acres of mule, that's not the story. But, but everybody from the top to the bottom of the pecking order from Europe got land. Land is a foundation of wealth, it's a foundation of this country. Real estate is the number one economic activity in America based on GDP, gross domestic product. Listen to me now, we're the largest economy in the world. Listen to me now. The largest economy on the planet is the United States of America, okay? Listen to me, almost $20 trillion a year. The number one, two, and three industries for making money, for building wealth, okay, building wealth, is real estate, financial services, health, health care, and medical, and then it's professional services. Did you listen to that? I'm gonna say it again. Real estate is absolutely, unquestionably, undeniably number one. Has been and will be. Number two is financial services. I'm in both of these industries, by the way. Number three is healthcare, and my father-in-law and my wife are in healthcare in the medical space. And number four is professional services, which is a large group of everybody else. Now, what troubles me a lot is a lot of my African-American brothers and sisters want to be in entertainment and sports. And when you look at the top 10 GDP creators in America, entertainment and sports aren't anywhere close to that top 10 list. It's not in the top 20 list, okay? It's not in the top 30 list. It's not in the top 50 list of GDP creators in America. I'll, maybe if you want me to, put it in your comments and I'll come back and do another video on what are the top GDP creators. But just to give you, give you, give you some sense of size of an industry, um, uh, the whole economy in America is about Eight, last time I checked, eighteen trillion dollars or so. Um, uh, a good portion of that is, let's just say, uh, gee, almost half of that is real estate, financial services, and um, medical. Medical and health is a third of it by itself, right? So that's trillions of dollars. Okay, the music business, all rap music, rock music, jazz music, R and B, every, you know, producers, writers, directors, everything, everything, forty billion dollars, forty billion dollars out of 20, almost $20 trillion. So it is microcosmic, it is very small. I'm not dissing it, I'm saying we're oftentimes looking for love in all the wrong places. We're digging in the wrong holes if you want a guaranteed shot at aspirational success. I'm talking about now what you have a real chance at succeeding at. There are three, there are 350 million people in America, give or take. There are 40 million uh, black folks, give or take, actually a little less than that. And you have, I don't know, a few thousand people who are professional athletes and in a, working in entertainment. And that's just not good odds for me. So I want you to understand that if real estate is the number one way the average person can come up, you need to own you some of it. Here's a shocking statistic. Those who own a home in America have an average net worth, write this down, of $231,000. Okay? Please do a session on GDP, gross growth gross domestic product, is that what you meant? Please let me know if that's what you meant. G it says GEP, Do you mean, did you mean GDP? It was a, it was a commenter's question, um, or suggestion for me to do a session. So let me get back to what I was saying. Real estate, the average net worth of somebody with a home is $231,000. Listen now, the average net worth of somebody who rents is $5,000. I'm gonna repeat that. The average net worth of somebody who owns a home is $231,000 thousand dollars 
That's the, what they're worth. Shalata mula. Okay? The average net worth of somebody who rents and say, y'all, I ain't trying to do that. I just want to just, you know, save my money and just have some fun and whatever it is they're saying. Renting's cool. I rented for a period of time. But at some point, you should move from renting to owning <coughs> for a whole lot of reasons. But the average renter is $5,000 net worth. It's like night and day. Now, here's a shocking statistic for African Americans. This is why I decided to do something for African Americans tonight exclusively, focusing on you. We'll share this video with your friends, your, your family members, those you love. Uh, if you're Caucasian or Asian or Indian or whatever, Latino watching this, share it with your African American friends. Have a conversation about this. Put this on your page. Let's start a dialogue. Let's make this go viral. Check this out. For the last three years, the number one group, and, this, and, and by the way, owning homes has been a boom since the global economic crisis of 2009 because everything fell apart in 2009 and you could buy a home from 2009 to 2015 for next to nothing because there was a, a global recession uh, and an economic depression in real estate. You could buy it for 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents on the dollar, buy it, rehab it, rent it, and hold it because it's gonna go up because they aren't growing any more land. So here are the facts. Every group, every group, every ethnic group has come up on home ownership in the last three years, except black people. So I'm gonna give you some numbers here. From, uh, from 19, uh, well, from the last three years, I'm gonna show you a graph and then show you what it means. So this is the graph, you can, you can um, this is from HUD, right? You can zoom in on it later, right? From housing and urban development, for which Operation Hope and Hope Insides, we have a Hope Inside location in 100, almost 150 locations across the country. We're going to become the Starbucks of financial inclusion, helping you come up, go see a Hope Inside location near you. Um, your home is not an asset if you, if you owe money on it. It's a liability. That's just not true. That's just not true. Uh, if you own a home and you have debt on it, uh, you're actually smart because, listen now, if you rent $2,000 a month, it's, you're, we're opening a window and you're throwing it out the window. You get no value for it. If you own a home and you have a mortgage on it, two thirds of what you pay on a mortgage, that same $2,000 is going to be written off on mortgage interest, which you get back through a tax refund. Let me know you understood what I just said. Respond to what I just said, okay? Make sure you understand what you just said in the, in the notes. Respond and make sure you understand what I'm saying. When you own a home and you have a mortgage on it, okay, if you pay $2,000 a month on the mortgage payment, you say, well, I don't own it. I have a mortgage on it. No, look, most the most wealthy people I know in the world use OPM, other people's money. You don't want to be paying cash for many things. It's not a good return on investment. You want proper leverage, just moderate leverage to then leverage up your small equity with debt to give you a greater return on investment. I don't have time to get into this right now, but I love intelligent debt. I do. I love smart debt. Uh, so if you have, I'm going to say this again, you rent, okay? This is why I, I, I want to make sure you, you remove misinformation from your life. People are telling you a lie. You say, they say to you, you don't own a home because you have a, a, a debt on it or mortgage. It's just not true. You rent, okay, in this example, right? You pay $2,000 a month to live in some fancy place downtown, okay? You are opening a window and throwing $2,000 out the window, $24,000 for the year, call it $25,000 of your $50,000 of income, half of your income, and you get zero credit for it other than you, I hope you enjoyed renting the space. Now, you get a home for the same $2,000 a month, but this time it's a mortgage payment, okay? At the end of the year, you get to write off for 20 of the 30 years you have a mortgage, 100%, I don't want to give you too much assurance, but a large part and generally 100% of that mortgage payment gets written off in mortgage interest, which is, listen now, tax deductible, which means you can get that back in a tax refund at the end of the year. So you're gonna get a, a big check, a refund check at the end of the year because you made payments on mortgage interest. A lot of wealth creation is about tax policy, right? We don't, again, I'm gonna make this video short. I don't wanna go into too deep, but tax policy is also designed for some people who understand financial literacy, who got the memo on money to, it allows them to come up. 
So there's depreciation, which benefits you as a, uh, uh, as a citizen. Appreciation, which means when that value of that property goes up, and, and most of these properties are going up, I own, uh, in my private personal business life, uh, I've seen a 25% appreciation of my real estate portfolio uh, in, the, in, in one of my companies. I won't tell you, I won't get into too much details, but it's been significant, and all I did was buy it, rehab it, rent it, and run it properly. But in addition to the cash on cash return, in addition to the return I've gotten on rent income, I've gotten the benefit of depreciation and appreciation and certain other tax benefits. But now the property is worth more than what I bought it for. So when I sell it, I get a windfall of cash that's called appreciation. So it is not true that when you own a home with debt on it that you don't own the home. It's not true. Put that out of your dictionary. Um, uh, so, uh, again, Ben, I'll go in the details. So this, this, this session, it's in here maybe, this, this session I'm doing here may get podcast. So people won't know that I'm talking to you here if it gets podcast. So I just say, everybody, I'm going to comment with you post. Um, but, the, but whether you agree with me or not, it doesn't matter. History disagrees with you because most wealth in this country came from the ownership of real estate. That's a fact 300 years ago. It's a fact. 500 years ago, it's a fact. Two years ago, it was, it's a fact since the global economic crisis of 2009, and this was driving GDP, gross domestic product, today. So it's just a fact, right? And we need to stop the misinformation. So the, so here, get this. Every ethnic group, homeownership group levels have gone up in the three years. I need you to understand this and write this down. Uh, whites, Hispanics, Asians, Indi uh, uh, Indians are not noted here. I know they are noted. Every group, Pacific Islanders, every group has had a net increase in home ownership in the last three years. Black folks have had a net decrease. Let this sink in for a minute. Black folks own 40% home ownership. 40% of black folks own a home. 73.1% of white Americans, non-Hispanic whites, Hispanic, non-Latino whites, whites. 70, call it 75% of white folks who have the net worth own a home. Hello? 46% of Latinos in going up own a home. 46%, almost 47% of Latinos. 40% of African Americans own a home. Now, I wish I had time to go deeper into the data because if somebody says, well, this is just racism, hold on. If it's just racism, okay, I'm going to do a whole video on this, then African Caribbean numbers, Nigerian black numbers, Ethiopian black numbers, Somalian, Somalian black numbers, South African black numbers, yeah, this is live streaming, uh, uh, and African American black numbers should all be the same. It's not, because everybody's black. It's not. In fact, if you go to the Boston Globe's report on net worth, just type in Boston Globe, eight bucks. Boston, Boston Globe, Globe, eight bucks, John O'Brien. You'll see an article I wrote based on a feature story in the Boston Globe. It said net worth for black folks in, in Boston, or net worth for uh, Caribbean blacks in Boston, uh, $1,300, which is still bad. It was excluding a home, by the way. Uh, the calculation net worth for African Americans in Boston, black but African American, was eight bucks. And the headline said, "This is not a typo." What this tells me is we're not dumb and we're not stupid. There's nothing wrong with us. We're brilliant. Whenever the rules are published and the playing field is level, we excel and we succeed. But we never got the memo on money. We didn't get the Freedmen's Bank from Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln of 1865. Some of you know my work around the Freedmen's Bank. I'm the only person, to, me and Opry Shope, to get the federal government to rename a building on the White House campus. It's now called the Freedmen's Bank Building. Search that on your smartphone. It used to be called the U.S. Treasury Annex. It's across the street from the White House, a uh, catty corner from, across the street from uh, the Treasury Department and, and catty corner from the White House. 
and, and next to Lafont Plaza it is centrally located. It was it was where a black bank used to exist under Lincoln's uh, uh, administration to teach free slaves about money, a domicile place for savings, a teach us about free enterprise system post slavery. Unfortunately, Lincoln was killed the next month. So it's not like we got the memo and screwed it up. We never got the memo. And for those who are still saying black folks should not own a prop piece of land, you need to understand that your hero, my hero, our hero, Frederick Douglass, who you know to be an abolitionist. I know to be a businessman and a real estate owner, and he owned $6 million in real estate in Baltimore, Maryland. Yes, Baltimore, Maryland. There's still a plaque on the wall in Baltimore. You can Google search my name and Frederick Douglass in Baltimore. You'll find the article that I published on that. It's on my Facebook page as well. Uh, when I went there, you can search Facebook as well. And the plaque, I think I did a video from there, the plaque of Frederick Douglass of where he owned this land, I think also where he might have lived. I think he lived actually lived in Akasha. But he owned this land and he rented it out to working class blacks. That gave him the financial freedom to though be, then become an abolitionist and social justice and civil rights leader. There's another civil rights leader who was financially free because he owned real estate, specifically homes. And that's Daddy King. Martin Luther King Sr. was a preacher, but also served on the board of a bank for 40 years. Yes, hello. Citizens Trust Bank in Atlanta, Georgia, the black-owned bank, was uh, was where Daddy King served on the board of the bank for 40 years. And the A.D. Williams, the grandfather of Dr. King, owned all the land where the King Center is now, owned that whole block. And that allowed that financial freedom from Daddy King, from A.D. Williams to Daddy King, allowed Dr. King to go get a PhD in theology and work for free in the civil rights movement. Nothing's free. Somebody paid your debt. Somebody paid your way. Uh, and so you need to understand how this system works. You need to work it so before it works you. So w with black folks having a 40% uh, home ownership rate, and check this out, half of African Americans have a credit score below 620. Listen to me now. Listen to me now. Listen to me now. Listen to me now. Not poor people. Not drug dealers, whatever whatever caricature you want to put on those who are not, you know, aspiring. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about hardworking, college educated, high school educated. You know, uh, getting up every day, working their tail off, going to church, feeding their family, loving. You know, great people, black folks. But our average credit score for all the black folks is less than 620. 44% of African Americans have a credit score below 620, which means that half of black folks are locked out of the free enterprise system. You cannot get a small business loan. One of the keys to ownership, home, to, to, to wealth creation, is owning a business. You cannot get a unsecured small business loan, listen to me now, at less than a 700 credit score. It's considered risky credit. It is unsecured, it's risky, and you're not getting it unless they think that you are a good credit risk. But when half of African Americans have a credit score below 620, it's not racism, okay? This is, this is classism, right? This is, this is capitalism, right? You're not getting that home loan at a decent rate. You're not getting credit cards at a decent rate. You're going to pay, those who make the least will pay the most. And you are definitely not getting an unsecured small business loan uh, with jacked up credit. And it affects you when you have jacked up credit. It affects your self esteem, your confidence, your belief in yourself. You argue, you start arguing with your husband and your wife over money. Your optionality becomes limited. Uh, it, it, the world just starts preying on you. To quote Ambassador Andrew Young, to live in a system of free enterprise and not to understand the rules of free enterprise must be the very definition of slavery. I'll repeat that. To live in a system of free enterprise and not to understand the rules of free enterprise must be the very definition of slavery. To quote in Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. after the Poor People's Campaign, during the Poor People's Campaign in Memphis, Tennessee, right before he was killed, assassinated actually, to say it plain, plain uh, he said, you cannot socialize, you, you cannot legislate goodness, you cannot pass a law to force someone to respect you. The only way to social justice in a capitalist country is economics and ownership. That was Dr. King in 1968. This game has been the same uh, from day one, slavery was a corrupt system of capitalism, having people work for free, and then taking that same uh, labor, turning it into an asset, financing it, insuring it, and trading it as if it was a baseball card, but it was a human being uh, that was enslaved and made to be an asset. And slaves actually were worth more than railroads, which was the height of economic activity in the 19th and 20th century. Slaves were worth more than that by double. Understand everything. If your day's not about God or love, your day's about money. So don't tell me you shouldn't own a home. Just go get one. 
I want you to understand when you don't own a home, you cannot have the appreciation that then that comes from owning a home, the wealth creation that then gives the optionality to pull a little money out to send your kid to college, put a little money out, put a little money out to start a business, to secure that your small business idea with that home. It, it, this, this, the pride, the self-esteem that comes from owning a home, the tax benefits that come from owning a home. Uh, there's so many things that, that, that the, the, the ability to pass down an asset from generation to generation, all that comes from home ownership. So I want you to get an insurance policy to, to, to guard against the downside. I want you to get as much education as you can possibly jam down your throat. I want you to become a homeowner if you possibly can, because if you can afford to rent today, you can afford to own typically, and it's more benefits from ownership than rentals. Even though I'm in the rental business, I want you to transition from renting to owning as soon as you can. You can go to Operation Hope and get a home ownership HUD certified home ownership class for free. Go to a Hope class near you and tell them I sent you. You can get a small business class for free. Here's a, here's another thing. I want you to write it down. Tell every young person in your family. If you don't have a a forget a high school degree. Listen, that, that is that is basic requirement, folks. You need a computer class. Listen to me now. You need a computer class by tenth grade. Write it down. Right. This needs to be like your Emancipation Proclamation for the 21st century. Every young person you know. You have got to give them, get them a computer class by 10th grade. If you can, get them into STEM programs, science, technology, engineering, and math, because all high, high quality jobs that pay mid five figures and certainly six figures that are not going to go away and be robot, uh, 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 robotized, okay, I'll get to that in a second, uh, uh, in the next five or 10 years. Those jobs are going to require you to think and understand how computer and technology works. Almost every company today is a technology company. If you're in the mortgage business, you're a technology company. You're in the coffee business, you're in the technology company. Go into Starbucks today and look at the technology running behind the counter. Whatever business you're in, you're in a technology business. You may not even realize that that's the business you're in. You're you have a car trucking business, you're in the technology business because what's driving those trucks these days are computers. So I need you to get a, a degree in computing, I'm sorry, I need you to get a class in computing and a class in financial literacy. And if you're an adult trying to start a business, I need you to get a class in accounting. And I need you to go to a small business course at Operation Hope. I need you to get your credit score up so you have optionality. These are your silver rights. I didn't say civil rights. I said your silver rights, okay? These are your silver rights. Civil rights was waged and won in the streets. Silver rights will be waged and won in the suites. Civil rights was about race and the color line. It's still necessary today to have civil rights leaders, but silver rights is about uh, class and poverty, then color is green, okay? So whether you're white, black, red, brown, or yellow, you wanna see some more green. This is not just an issue of black folks. There are more poor white folks than poor anybody else, and the number one group dying in America are high school educated white men. But I'm focusing right now, uh, I'll talk to other groups in, other, in another video. I'll talk to my white brothers and sisters in another video in rural America. I have a message for you too. But if you are, if you are, if you know anybody who's African American, get this video to them. You've got to put your foundation for success in place. At least you got to make sure you're not being preyed upon, which means I got to get you out of a surviving mentality and into a thriving mentality. Because you've been preyed upon your whole life. Because you've been paid, preyed upon your your whole life. Your whole life. You've been told you're not anything. Your whole life, you've been treated as less than. And for three, this nation has survived 450 years, uh, 300 years enslaved, 150 years free. And for 300 years, you, you were denied education. Your family was, just, was, was separated. You were not taught the memo or financial literacy. You were not given, uh, given a hand up or a handout. You were actually actively repressed. You were not allowed to vote. Uh, look, you have a reason to be angry, but you cannot afford to be angry. Anger is not a business plan and being upset doesn't solve a problem and being a victim doesn't pay a bill. I need you to understand that economic, that social justice today is access to capital, which is why I want you to get your credit score up, okay? 
it is as much education as you can shove down your throat, right? And it's access to opportunity. And those three things will then give you the stability of self-esteem and confidence, which will then allow you to have a stable family. Uh, it's to stop arguing with your wife or husband about money. A, a lot of the, the bad decisions we make in life are money related, which means in a lot of our, we're not making very healthy choices about our body because it's expensive to be healthy. It's not expensive to go to McDonald's and, and feed a family for three for nine bucks. That's why we're picking fast foods because it's cheap, okay? But fast food's not real food. No disrespect intended to fast food operators and fast foods companies. Occasionally I go to McDonald's myself, but I don't live there because if you live there, this stuff will kill you. Not because they're trying to kill you, but because it's not meant to be eaten every day. You need fruits and vegetables, people. You need, as my wife would say, wealth, health. You need to understand that you need whole food. And whole food is expensive to uh, do sustainably, which means you need some wealth and education and income. All these things are tied together. The, as your education comes up, as your frequency uh, increases, as your option, as your credit score increases, as your wealth increases, you start making better and more intelligent and more thoughtful choices, including about what you put in your body and you live longer. There are no 350 pound, 80, 80 year old people, so don't even think about eating yourself into a coma and not being concerned about it. You won't live past 60. You, you're your body cannot hold 350 pounds of weight. Your body was never designed to do that. So black folks we understand soul food, which we are very proud of, was not meant to be eaten by you every single day. Soul food came out of a negative that we turned into a positive. We'll do this as a separate video if you want me to. Soul food came from a disrespect. The slaveholder, the slave owner would throw scraps out the back door as a sign of disrespect of the pieces of the meat of, of the animal that they didn't want. And we turn a negative into a positive by turning it into a delicacy, by turning them into grits, hog maws, pig's feet, uh, 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 chicken legs, uh, 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 hoe cakes. You know, we come out hoe cakes. Well, that was a cake made in a hoe, you know, a shovel. Literally, you think about what soul food. Soul food is the food that was left over when the rest of the food was taken as prime, and we just turned it into a positive. And that's beautiful, and it's amazing, and I love it, but you shouldn't be eating. And they had so much salt on it because it, it, salt kept food from going bad. But salt will also take your blood pressure through the roof. And one big problem with black folks is high blood pressure, and it's killing you. Is this too much chit chitlings? That's right. Say all the, all the foods. Now that I'm saying this, it'll make sense to you. Think about what soul food is. Again, I love soul food. I still eat it, but I don't eat it every day. I don't eat Chinese food every day either, okay? Uh, so, so I'm not dissing something. I'm just saying everything has its rightful place. I want you to come up. That's my new series that I'm putting on Instagram, IGTV, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, all my platforms. Periscope, I'm doing a How You Come Up series, three to five minutes of breaking life down into three minute nuggets. You tell me what topic you want me to talk about and I'll get, I'll dig into that all, uh, all day and all night and I'll break it down over the course of a few months and lean in so that this is not overwhelming. This particular session should probably be quite overwhelming to you because I've covered so much in such a short period of time. But I need you to understand that if you don't understand how America works, I'm quoting a friend of mine now, Rahel, who's helping with my, my, my new book, uh, uh, which I'm working on when I go to Maui uh, next week with my family. But, but I want you to, what they said, she said she's Ethiopian. She said her mother said to her when she came to America, if you don't understand how uh, America works, you will fail. I'll repeat that. If you don't understand how America works, you will fail, right? And, Sh and Shaysha, my wife, has said that 80% of your health, your health, in wellness is about what you put in your mouth. And the rest of it is about exercise, stretching, and working out. Check this out. 80% of your health is what you put in your mouth. 20% is exercising, which you should do anyway. We should do, I do exercise 15 minutes every day. Stretching, I take a foam roller. This foam roller travels with me everywhere I am. Fat, working out that fascia tissue that lies right at the bone level uh, to keep the arthritis away, keep your, keep your blood flowing. You have got to become smart about living. You can't just live and have ready, fire, aim. You gotta be smart about living because no one's gonna care as much about you as you care about you. Charity starts at home. The, fl the flight attendant will tell you when the, when the plane is going down, put an oxygen mask on your face first and then your child. 
Because if you can't save you, you dang sure can't save them. Whatever goes around, comes around. So as I wrap this up, I'm going to leave you with some wisdom from an old Southern saying from my mother and my father. If I don't love you, if, if, no matter how much I love you, my son or my daughter, I can only, if I don't have wisdom, I can only give you my own ignorance. I'm going to repeat that. Again, share this video. Share, 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 share this video. Put it on your page. Tell your friends to watch it and watch it on replay. If I don't, if, if I don't have, no matter how much I love you, if I, I got excited, let me just calm down, slow it down. No matter how much I love you, my son or my daughter, if I don't have wisdom, I can only give you my own ignorance. So out of bad habits, we pass down, uh, out of love, I'm sorry, we pass down bad habits from generation to generation. Out of love, we pass down bad habits from generation to generation. We're not dumb and we're not stupid. Look what we deal with sports and entertainment. When the rules are published and the playing field is level, we excel and we succeed. We're not dumb and we're not stupid. It's what we don't know that we don't know that's killing us, but we think we know. I'm out. John Hope Bryant, spread the word. This is a civil rights movement. Unbought, unbiased, unbought, unbent, and unbiased. Coming to you with this new movement to change your world. Starting today. Don't let anybody tell you what you cannot do. Everything I've said in this video, you can do. Starting tomorrow. But it starts with you understanding that wealth, my book, The Memo, comes from Capitas. Capitas is the Latin translation for capital, which means knowledge in the head. It has nothing to do with money. Stop talking about getting paid. Start talking about building wealth. And you build wealth from the shoulders up, the neck up, by having a new perspective, by getting out of a surviving mentality and into a new thriving mentality. Let's take the world by storm, by taking our lives back and be positive in everything you do. Because you don't have to worry about hate. You know what I'm talking about? Somebody hating on you, love them back. Why? Because, and this I think it's a Dr. King inspired quote, that hate corrodes and destroys the container it sits within. Boom, I'm out.